We're on. Hey, late night from Willowdale, and uh, although it's late, it's late afternoon from Willowdale, we actually are in Willowdale. Uh, we're not in my apartment. We actually are in Willowdale, and uh, we're in the Young and Steels area of Toronto. And it's late afternoon on Good Friday, and we just wanted to do a quick video. We haven't done one since January, and of course we're living in crazy nutty times in the time of COVID and coronavirus, COVID, coronavirus, whatever you want to call it. Um, so we just wanted to say hello, we're still around, um, and make a few points. Um, the first of all is, uh, yeah, uh, keep your distance from people, um, and wash your hands frequently, but uh, don't get hysterical, okay? There's a lot of hysteria going on. A lot of hysteria. Don't get hysterical, okay? Um, you need to get out and get some, you need to get some, you need to do, you need to get fresh air, you need to get out, you need to do get some exercise. Um, you just have to keep your distance from people. All right? We're like, I'm standing seven, eight feet from Khalid here. Uh, but getting exercise is important. And you know, this is a great way uh, for people to discover your city, your town, your village. You know, I'm walking in neighborhoods I haven't been into in years. I'm walking in new neighborhoods and discovering places in Toronto I've never been to before, like the Brickworks. I did walk through the Leslie Street Spit the other day, right in the middle, you know, it was great. Sat in a little place right in the middle of Lake Ontario, you know, and uh, wrote in my journal. And uh, I'm discovering uh, some great architecture in the neighborhoods uh, of Toronto. And uh, yeah, and I'm becoming an urban explorer and um, losing some weight and it's great. Uh, and I'm getting fresh air. Uh, yes, it's important to stay at home and not to connect with others and not to socialize with others or cluster with others, absolutely. But uh, you do need to get out uh, and get some fresh air, get some exercise, and, uh, and keep your, but definitely keep your distance from people. Now, uh, I'm getting tired, I'm sure others are as well, we're getting tired of the constant lectures and hector, the lecturing and hectoring by politicians and the media. You know, uh, do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that. You know, uh, it, it gets, it is getting tiresome. We know, we know, we know. We don't need to be reminded by Trudeau, Justin Bieber, Trudeau, and John Tory, and Doug Ford. And, you know, we know we have to stay at home. We know we have to stay at home as much as possible. But we do, we know, we know all of this. We know we have to wash our hands. Don't treat us like kindergarten kids. Like this is, we're not in kindergarten anymore. We're adults, you know? Like, we don't want to stop lecturing. As it's the, the, the lecturing by politicians and the media is horrible. The media is really disgusting. The media keeps calling for martial law. If it was up to the media, we'd be living in, uh, we'd be, the media keeps calling for martial law. I can't believe it. Let's clamp down further on people's civil liberties. The media is horrible in, in all of this. It's just really disgusting. Um, it's in crises like this that you begin to lose your civil liberties and you don't get them back. So um, I think people need to be aware of creeping fascism uh, and losing their civil liberties. After 9-11, the U.S. imposed all sorts of restrictions and draconian surveillance measures on all of this. And uh, a lot of this stayed in place, okay, after 9-11 in the United States. Uh, so beware of losing your civil liberties. Countries are using the coronavirus crisis, COVID crisis, to clamp down on people's civil liberties. Hungary, uh, uh, and many other countries as well, Egypt. They're using this crisis to clamp down on people. India, India is terrible uh, to clamp down on, on civil liberties. So uh, people need to be aware of losing their civil liberties. It's in crisis like this that uh, uh, um, Governments can take advantage of situations and all of a sudden you're losing your civil liberties. And it's, I call it creeping fascism. Just beware of it. Uh, um, the other point I want to make is uh, we're, what, there's, there's some, what benefit, it's a horrible thing, you know, people are dying and everything, but some of the benefits of this horrible thing is uh, the, the planet's cleaning itself up. The pollution levels are way down. The, look at the sky, it's so blue. The pollution levels of all the cities around the world are way down. Um, the, there are fish in the canals of Venice again. So the, we're seeing this, uh, this 
one benefit of, of, of a slowdown in the economy is that the planet is cleaning itself up. Yeah, the environment is a lot cleaner now. The other benefit I think we're seeing in this crisis is people are realizing now the role of government and how important government is in our lives. And uh, hopefully at it when this crisis abates, people will realize, you know, government is really important. It's only government that can get certain things done. Basically, governments have nationalized the economies all around the world. And, uh, and, we've, and we, now we're seeing uh, uh, the value of social programs. And, um, and hopefully, after this crisis abates, people will say, yeah, we need social programs. And uh, we need to put more money into our health care system. And, you know, so, yeah, so th that's the value of government. I hope people realize, uh, even after this crisis passes, how important government is in your life and, uh, and, and how important social programs are. And, we, and, uh, and so next time, when the next election rolls around, don't vote for politicians that are that call for cuts to social programs and health care programs and education and uh, tax cuts that only benefit the wealthy. Uh, you know, so, you know, I, it's a nice gesture when people go on their balconies and clang their pots. But sometimes I find gestures during crises, uh, they're, only, they're just gestures. It's like at, at Christmas when people all of a sudden become generous when generally they're not. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, a lot of these people clanging in the, their pots on their balconies are some, some, not, of course, not all, but some of these same people voted for Doug Ford and voted for cuts and voted for other right wing politicians that support cuts. Um, uh, gestures are nice and it's nice, it's definitely important to support frontline healthcare workers. Um, but remember, uh, you know, in the next time the next election rolls around, don't vote for politicians that support massive cuts. Uh, to, to social programs and healthcare and all of that. So, uh, one last thing I want to say uh, is, yeah, so after the crisis passes, I hope we realize the importance of government is in our lives and the importance of social programs. Um, uh, the other thing I'll just uh, end on this. I forget is, too. <laughs> uh, um, the United States. The United States, what we're seeing here is American exceptionalism at its worst, okay? One country has really not been handled of this, this crisis well, and that's the United States. And that's, this is, this is shows, I hope Americans realize this once the crisis passes, they have a dysfunctional government system, they have a dysfunctional healthcare system, they have massive inequality, uh, uh, they have, you know, they have, um, they've, they've cut taxes way too much, and they, they don't have monies for uh, for things like <laughs> base, meeting people's basic needs. You know, the United States in many ways is a failed state. It's a failed state. And there this is uh, this is one country that is not coming going to come through this crisis lightly. Uh, it's there. Americans are paying a heavy cost. And uh, I hope Americans, after this crisis abates, look at themselves and go, "What kind of society have we become?" You know, where a society where a lot of, you know, the, a good chunk of the people dying from COVID are black people. Uh, what kind of society is that? You know, um, where minorities are getting the brunt of the, are feeling the brunt of this crisis, taking the brunt of this crisis. And uh, yeah, you know, the American system of government is just not working. Thousands are dying. And they're, they're, they're a country, they're, don't they have more cases than anyone else could in the world? I mean, they're, um, what the United States? Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> by it's, far. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, this is a country that has not handled the crisis well. It's a, in many ways that the United States is a failed state. The world sees it, and I uh, hope Americans see it when this crisis passes and they'll reform their society. Um, uh, yeah, um, it's, it, the, every, the world will be a different place when this crisis passes. Uh, but other viruses are out there. Coronavirus is only one of six, more than, there's more than 600 viruses in this, in this family of viruses. Uh, and so other viruses are out there. So we're gonna have to learn how to deal with these viruses and these pandemics. Um, society just can't totally shut down all the time. So we're gonna have to 
we're gonna have to find out ways to, to deal with this. Uh, well, no more wet markets. That's yeah. that's yeah. helpful. <laughs> so okay, that's it. Cause we did the video. This is the third video. We I want to end it there. We're gonna have to learn how to deal with this. Um, beware of creeping fascism, because. Uh, during crises it's like this, you get your civil liberties taken away, and because it's hysteria, people tend to go along. And there's a lot of groupthink. Um, uh, so beware of creeping fascism. Definitely get some exercise, go for a walk about, keep your distance, wash your hands, uh, and don't let those lecturing and hectoring politicians get to you. And uh, yeah, basically don't watch the news, because there is no news. On, uh, and, uh, and, Basically, again, once again, the well, so we see the benefits of government and social programs and what government can do for us. Uh, and that's, hopefully that'll stay after this crisis. Uh, okay, that's it. Um, that's it. That's it.